All right, so in this video, I wanna get into some cervical spine radiographs and kind of go through the basics and maybe a few more advanced things to kind of give you some good familiarity with the routine reporting of cervical radiographs, which actually offer a large wealth of information um, if you really know what you're looking for. So starting with some normal anatomy, um, obviously I expect you to be familiar with this, but uh, some things just to be aware of kind of for interpretation purposes. Um, a few things I like to point out uh, frequently to interns and residents is that um, the C23 facets are in a little bit different orientation, so even in a well-positioned uh, lateral, um, often these are not well visualized and can occasionally appear fused. Um, and of course, the rest of the facets are generally uh, well seen. When we're looking for kind of the technical quality of the film, our mandibular uh, angles here should be pretty well superimposed, and that tells us it's a well-positioned lateral, not too much lateral flexion or rotation of the head. Uh, the anterior tubercle here should look like a D like this, and the posterior tubercle often mimics that. Sometimes they can be elongated like this one is, but typically we expect that to be somewhat of a D shape. The inferior end plate here is concave, while the superior end plate is flat, okay? And so that kind of results in this sharp and inferior angle. And so that's not an osteophyte, that's just the normal morphology. The uh, post, uh, posterior superior corners of the vertebral bodies tend to look a bit more sclerotic because our transverse processes come off here. Um, so we usually will see uh, that sometimes, uh, you know, depending on how uh, superimposed they are, they may look a little bit different. Same thing here uh, at C2 where they're a bit larger. Our cervical spinous processes are bifid, uh, and this person's are not uh, super bifid, but we expect to see, you know, some little tubercles oftentimes coming off, and these can be in various orientations depending on, you know, how they're structured. When we're looking at the frontal radiograph here, we can see the bifid spinous processes in many cases as well. Uh, coming off like this. And oftentimes when we're looking at our uh, air shadow here, our tracheal air shadow comes up and it narrows here. Okay, and so this is our laryngeal constriction. So sometimes that will appear as a vertical lucent line on a frontal radiograph. Uh, that's a normal finding. Um, but sometimes people mistake that for a spina bifida occult or something. And then we come up here into our piriform recesses. Uh, and so that's our kind of the air shadow that we expect to see. And then our hyoid bone uh, often projects uh, transversely across like this, and that may line up uh, with the tracheal cartilage, which is down here, um, sometimes and create almost like a ring-like shape uh, of calcium on our frontal radiograph, so just not to mistake that for normal anatomy. When we're looking for counting segments on a frontal view, oftentimes we can see the dens up here and count down, but sometimes we can't. And so people often I see over calling cervical ribs as hypoplastic first ribs. And so something that may help you out there, of course, besides just counting from C2, if you can, is that the T1 transverse processes point superiorly here like this, uh, while the C7 transverse processes point horizontal to downward. And we don't uh, call those hyperplastic until they cross the lateral aspect of the T1 transverse processes. So this one over here is perhaps a little bit hyperplastic. And then the rest of them kind of just poke out perhaps just a little bit lateral to the articular pillars here. All right, and so the articular pillars, we can't see the facets on the frontal film because of that 45 degree angle, right? And our central ray is coming in like this. So what we see is this kind of nice uh, sinusoidal type of uh, line uh, contour along the lateral margin of the vertebral bodies, right? So lateral vertebral bodies end here and everything lateral to that is our articular pillars. So the joints are at the bulging out portion and then the central portion of the pillar is the concave portion. And that'll be important later on once we start talking about degenerative uh, disease. And our tracheal air shadow here is right behind the clavicle so that should project uh, fairly midline between those overlying the spinous processes. Of course, patients can be rotated um, and that, that may account for some of that uh, tracheal offset. Uh, so we wanna look for how well the spine is aligned between the clavicles for that. All right, so that's just a little bit of kind of the normal anatomy that people you know, occasionally uh, may not uh, appreciate uh, in quite in that fashion.